Welcome to Family Bible Time. We're back. I'm sorry for the long delay. We've had uh, some pretty uh, big things to deal with, but the Lord has been kind to us and um, we're back. So um, we are going to be back in uh, verse 18 today, verse 18, but we'll try to refresh uh, from verse 15 onwards, you want to go back to verse 12? That would be very helpful. <laughs> All right, we'll go back to verse 12. <laughs> let's pray, let's get into it. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you that we can um, come back to your word and be refreshed by it. Thank you that you are um, able to strengthen us and we pray that you would strengthen us through your word now in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Alright Paul's grip on God's sovereignty was ironclad wasn't it mm. there he was in prison and yet what did he say I want you to know brothers yes. that and what brothers has, has happened, happened to, to me, me has really served to advance the gospel, the gospel. So, so that, that it, it has, has become, become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most, most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not, not sincerely, sincerely, but seeking to afflict me, me in my, my imprisonment. I think that's it. Yes. Uh, a bit Christ rough there. Sure. Really um, yeah, we've got it right. The former proclaimed Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely. Out of selfish, uh, selfish ambition, not sincerely. But thinking, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. Okay. So, uh, excuse the rough uh, catch-up, um, but verse 18, what then? So what's Paul's conclusion? What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that, I rejoice. Mm -hmm. So what's, how does he, he kind of wrap it up? So you've got two different groups of people. The... Former, but the latter do it are doing it out of love. These mm. are um, the people who are doing it from goodwill, uh, knowing that he's put there for the defense of, of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but selfish thinking. Am, you can change it. In this. Sorry, so it is. Oh, yeah. Selfish ambition. Selfish ambition, uh, seeking to afflict him. Afflict me in my imprisonment. Mm. So then he's kind of concluding, isn't he? He's talking to himself, but he's also mm. talking to the Philippians. What then? What, what are we going to, how are we going to respond mm. to this reality? Mm. And this is so good, isn't it? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. Now, it's quite important to realise Paul's not rejoicing in the fact that some people are doing it out of envy and rivalry. Or, uh, so, yes, selfish ambition. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, uh, envy and rivalry and, and self, selfish ambition, mm -hmm. not sincerely. He's not rejoicing in the fact that they're doing it for bad motives. He's rejoicing, he's choosing to rejoice that Christ is preached. Mm. So this is no excuse. Mm. Um, also, it's important to understand. Some people might point to a verse like this and say, oh, look, we don't want to 
I don't want to um, mm. point out that there are people you don't don't get fussy about what other people are doing and their motives and so on because that Paul rejoiced Paul just rejoiced that Christ was preached. Mm. It's true he did, but that was when he couldn't do anything about it. Mm. There he is in prison. He couldn't expose them. He couldn't deal with it. He rejoiced. He took he took the best of the whole situation and said, "Look." I'm just going to rejoice that Christ is preached. Mm. But that doesn't mean he was okay with them preaching out of envy and selfish and rivalry and selfish ambition. Mm. And if you look at the his writings to the Corinthians, um, you know, when there are people who are competing and starting factions and getting puffed up in favour of one against another. He says, no, that's carnal. Don't do it. Mm. So it's not okay to preach Christ out of envy and rivalry. Mm. Paul's just going to make the best of it. When that's happening, he's going to say, well, at least Christ is being preached. Mm. And in that I can rejoice. Mm. He's not rejoicing in what they're doing wrong. He's rejoicing in the fact that God can still use it for good. So that's good, isn't it? So, um, what then? That's how it starts, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. Is that pretense or pretense? Pretense. 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 <laughs> that sounds better, pretense. That's because you're American. <laughs> um, pretense. I don't know. Pretense. Someone will tell us. In I the don't comments. know because whether it's the different use of the word, isn't it? Sometimes we say it differently depending on how it's used in the sentence. Anyway. Whether in pretense or in truth, truth. it's not whether in pretense or what or pretense. It's whether in pretense or in truth. That's what it says. I know. All right. <laughs> what then? Okay, let's let's do this. You ready? Okay. No. What uh -huh. then? Let's read it through okay. together. What then, mm. question mark, only that in every way, comma, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. So we've got several clauses, haven't we? So we've got what then, and then only that in every way, and then whether in pretense or in truth, <laughs> Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Five phrases. Right, let's do this. What, what then? then? Only, Only that, that in, in every way, way whether, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ, Christ is proclaimed, and, and in, in that, that I rejoice. rejoice. What then? I think we've got it. Oh, sorry. What then? Uh, how does it start? Only that. Only. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yep. Did I get it right? Yep. Only that in every way. I'm going to forget that, that for some reason. So what then? Only that in every way. Whether way. in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Good. Your turn. What then? Only in... Only that. Only that... In every way. In, only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. Okay. All together. What then? What then? Only, Only that, that in, in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, in truth Christ, Christ is, is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. Right. Okay, how did you do? Let us know how you did. Um, again, sorry for the delay. Hey, um, this is really worth it. You may be, and we're going slowly with 
really kind of battling through this year. <laughs> um, my dear dad just went to be with the Lord the other day and um, at the end of his life, the only scripture that he had as he began to lose his memory and the only scripture that he still had was Psalm 23 and at one point even that was nearly gone but then it came back in bits and pieces and he was desperately trying to hold on to it you could see his mind was failing in all sorts of ways but he was kind of trying hard to cling to this this truth that he had Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd and you know, it was such a comfort to him. Um, mm. But uh, bear in mind that he, you know, he lost his eyesight, unfortunately. We would print out um, verses of the Bible so big that it took, um, you know, took a page to, to put half a verse on it. Um, and even then he'd sit there with a magnifying glass and a light and he wouldn't be able to really read it, but he'd try and say, oh, I read a word, you know. <laughs> um, you don't know when the Lord could allow you to be put in a situation where you don't